Well, hey guys, welcome to episode 12 of Noob Eden. Hey, we are going to start a short series on getting started in exploration in EVE, and particularly aimed at the very new player, people who, to whom the idea of scanning or uh, data and relic sites and all those things don't mean much. We really want to get you into this because it's a really intriguing and exciting part of the game. And I've noticed that the majority of people who've taken up the uh, recruitment link that gets you the extra million skill points if you start the game through the link in the description below, the majority of players who've used that link are currently alpha characters so definitely in this first part of the series i, I want to aim specifically at some fits and some ideas and techniques that even alpha uh, characters or alpha clones can use and be successful with uh, as well as give some ideas of what omega uh, clones could add on top of that to make things uh, a little bit easier for them so let's start by trying to answer the question well what is exploration in eve Scattered throughout New Eden and pretty much in every solar system, there are these hidden little signatures. Uh, the little signals coming from space uh, that we don't know what they are. We don't know what they represent. So the life of an explorer is finding these signatures, finding out what they are, and then hopefully using them to make some profit or some income from that career or that life as an explorer. So today, in this first episode, we are going to show you guys how you can find these signatures, how to use a technique called probe scanning to pin them down on it and identify what they are, and just talk about the different types of signatures that you can find and how you might be able to use them to make some money. Now, I'm sitting in a ship that you won't have seen in any of the previous episodes on this channel, and there are some modules on this ship that you won't have seen yet, but we'll talk about them towards the end. I just really want to get into this, um, this idea of finding these signatures and how to scan them down and teach you how to be efficient at scanning. And then towards the end of the episode, we'll dock up and then we'll talk about the, the ships, the, the modules, some of the skills and all that kind of stuff. So without any more faffing on, let's get on to teaching you guys how to be good at what we call probe scanning. Because the extent to which you will make money out of exploration will depend very much on how quickly you can scan down these signatures. Let's get started by coming up to our Neocom menu and clicking on the agency icon. If you don't have it, although I think it's there by default, come across to activities, the agency. And the agency is just a central hub for activities and things you can get involved in in EVE. Today we want to look at exploration. So if I click on the exploration card, there are a number of options here related to exploration. These first two are the ones we're interested in today. Combat anomalies and cosmic signatures. Now you can see here that combat anomalies, it says they're strong signals that are locations of pirate hideouts. So if we click on that, it will give us some information about nearby combat anomalies. Now, combat anomalies are PVE sites that you can go to and fight NPCs and kill them and get loot and reward. Now, these cards here in the agency filter give you some information about nearby combat anomalies. So in our current system in Jita, there are two anomalies. There's a Garista's Refuge and a Garista's Burrow. If I click on a Coochie and it tells me that's one jump away, there's two anomalies there. There's a burrow and a hideaway. Right? And all of these cards here are one jump away. I'm getting some information about what is there. But as soon as I go two jumps away or further, I know there's one anomaly there, but it's unknown. I don't get the details. I'm going to have to go there to find out what it is. Now, this is not really exploration in as much as these sites are already found. Anyone can warp to them. We're going to show you how to, to see them in space in a moment. But the ones we're really after, true explorers are looking for these cosmic signatures. These are hidden sites and they require probe scanning to pinpoint them down. The cards act very much the same though. I can see uh, one jump away there is two signatures, unknown cosmic signatures in Akuchi. There's one signature in Morazi, and I can scroll down. If I was uh, looking, let's find somewhere that's got uh, maybe three or so, four signatures. Two jumps away, Para has four signatures. And you see a little note here, cosmic signatures can 
only be warped to once they're successfully scanned down to 100% using the probe scanner. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to jump over to Para and we're going to have a look at these four signatures. So let's set the destination for Para and I'll see you there in a couple of seconds. And through the magic of editing, here we are in Para or Payara. I don't know how you want to say that. Now you might be thinking, what the heck is going on with the colors? of the space in Payara. Well, interestingly, when we got here, Payara is currently undergoing what we call a Sancha incursion. An incursion is a, a PVE event. Uh, I've never done one, gotta be honest with you, so I'm not gonna try and talk like I know what's going on, but I do know it has some effect on what's going on in the system. And if I hover over this icon, I can see some of the uh, penalties to shield and armor resistances, etc., etc. There is a Sinosaurus field gemmer, which means no Sinos can be lit in here. And don't worry if you don't know what a Sino is, at some point down the track, we will talk about that. It's not important, other than to explain that that's part of the reason why this place looks so weird. All right, let's get on with trying to find these signatures. Just pop back to the agency. And if we have a look at the combat anomalies, what do we have in Payara? One anomaly, a drone cluster. Hold on to that because I want you to, uh, we're going to find that in a moment. We're not going to go there, but I want to show you how you find that. What I am interested in is the cosmic signatures. And there are the four signatures. Now you'll notice before it just said unknown signature. But now that we're in the system, I actually get the, uh, the six character ID code. Every signature has three letters, dash, three numbers as its code or its identification. Now, how do we find them? Well, in previous videos, we've talked about our directional scanner, which we accessed by coming down here and going to directional scanner. But if I hang a left instead of a right, I get to this thing called the probe scanner. If I click on that, it will launch in a, uh, a, a box like this that has my solar system map and attached is this probe scanner window. Now, I'm going to disconnect the probe scanner window, just like we did with the D scanner window previously, and keep this solar system map up. Let's have a look at what's going on. Down here in my probe scanner window, I can see, remember I asked you to remember the combat anomaly was called the drone cluster? And there it is. It's a combat site clear it to receive rewards. Now I can warp straight to it because combat anomalies are not hidden. You can warp directly to them, but you can only do that from your probe scanner window. Now I'm not interested in those. I want to know these, these I'm exploring. I want to know these cosmic signatures. I don't really have much uh, combat capacity in this ship. So I am actually going to filter out the anomalies. In fact, I might filter out everything. All I want at this point is the cosmic signatures. And here they are, my four unknown cogs cosmic signatures. How do we find them? We do that by using core scanner probes. Now, on my ship, I have a core probe launcher one. This is the, the, uh, the turret, the high slot module that launches the probes. There are none in there, so I'm going to have to right click and reload my uh, eight scanner probes they are the i guess the ammunition so to speak that that goes into the launcher that gets spat out into space that help us find these signatures now in the time that i did that you will have noticed one of these segment signatures has actually disappeared so we're down to three now because we are in high sec we're relatively safe here i'm actually going to turn my d scan off and you'll see that the green sphere will disappear from my solar system map now when you're doing this for real in dangerous locations, low sec wormholes, etc., or null sec, um, I, you should keep that on. But let's, for, for the sake of learning, we're going to turn it off so that this is a, a clearer picture. In fact, to make this uh, solar system map look even clearer, I'm going to turn off some of the markers. I'm going to turn off everything except personal locations and planets for the moment. All right, just so we can tidy things up, and you'll see why in a minute. Now, to launch these probes, there are a number of ways. I could press this button and they will get launched out into space, my scanner probes. However, I'm going to use this button down here, Launch Pinpoint Formation. Now, these three buttons allow you to launch your probes in a certain formation. 99.9% .9 of the time, we're just going to use this Pinpoint Formation. And you'll see when I click it, I get these little spheres, blue spheres, with a sort of controller box in the middle. 
and this is where all the magic happens. Each of these blue spheres represents the range that my probe is able to look to try and find this hidden signature. Now, eight probes means that there are eight of these blue spheres and they're all quite tightly packed at the moment. That's okay, that's exactly how we want them to be. Now you'll notice in the time we've been talking, our signature count has dropped to two. I guess that's one of the pitfalls of doing exploration in fairly crowded high sec space is that competition means they will disappear quickly. So let's get on with it before we lose one of these two. What is actually going on on this image that you see on the screen? Well, I can, with my mouse, I can click and drag around to get a 3D view of the whole solar system. I can zoom in and out with my mouse wheel, and these numbers represent AU, the distances, from the center of the solar system where the sun or the star is. My, I can have a elevation, sorry, a plan view, so top down, or if I click and drag, I can look from side on and see an elevation view. I can click and drag my box and move the location of where my probes are going to be uh, in any direction or if I was to looking from plan view from the top down I can move them around in that orientation. The red sphere means that the actual location of the signature will be somewhere on the surface of that sphere and if I click on signature BGV it's this sphere that lights up. Now that's quite a big space to cover on that sphere. At the moment I have very weak to no signal showing it as 0%. My goal is to get that to 100% because at 100% I'll be able to warp to it. Now there are a couple of milestones along the way. At 25% when I hit 25% um, signatures uh, signal I'll get some idea of what the signature is. Now they can be combat sites which are dead space pockets of NPCs to kill and get loot. They can be gas sites where there are clouds of gas that I can actually use uh, as a gas harvester module to collect that gas which is a commodity I can sell. They can be hacking sites which can be either data or relic sites where there's a small hacking mini game that we'll look at in uh, one of the, the near future episodes of how to do that hacking game successfully or it could be a wormhole which we're going to take us into some parts of unknown space all of which we'll be looking at but they're the kinds of things that these signatures could be now we're down to one as I've been talking so let's see if we can find this one if not we're just going to move to another system and find somewhere a little bit quieter in fact, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it here, I'm going to go and find somewhere that's a little less crowded uh, so that we can spend some time showing you how to do this properly. All right, so here we are in Anada. We've got four signatures. Let's see how we go. If I click on each signature, I can see the red sphere pop up on my solar system map. Let's launch my probes in my pinpoint formation, and I'm going to set them with my slider to 8AU. Now, in a moment, I'm going to do the first one just using this slider and analyze button, but we're going to set up some shortcuts to make it much quicker. But for the moment, let's just go through the process. There's two components to doing this quickly and efficiently. One is double clicking. The other is setting up some shortcuts so that we don't actually have to drag around this slider and click on the analyze button. We do it all through some hotkeys. So the double clicking, what does the double clicking do? Well, if I double click anywhere in my solar system map up here, you'll see it instantly rotates from my elevation view, side on, to the plan view, top down, side on, top down. That's super important because most of the time, that's all I'm going to be using, the top down view and the side view. So I'm going to put my, drag my probe control box there, right into the middle of the solar system, right where the sun would be, double click side on, and I'm going to drag it so it's sort of on the plane. Now, if I need to, I can zoom in to see a little bit better. And then I'm going to hit my Analyze button. At 8AU, that is going to hit most of the signatures because any signature only spawns within 5AU of a planet. And most of the planets are in the sent around the sun and you'll see now I've got some of these red dots on my probe scan window showing a ping back that I've now got some signal on these now I want to start to narrow down onto one of those signals so double clicking again I'm going to pick this one here JQI if I double click on it it will put that at the center of my screen double click and I can drag from the top down view my control box double click 
and I'm going to raise it until it's also centered on the center of the control box. Now you could sort of you know pan around there. You'll see that my control box is centered over that. I tend to just use it you know from that one side on because I know if I've done the top down and the side on, I should be in the right spot. I'm going to drop my probes down one step from 8AU to 4AU, and I'm going to hit analyze. and I wait for the scan to analyze. You'll see it swipes across the screen from left to right. And at 72.3%, you can see this is a combat site. Now, I'm not fit for combat. I'm looking for data or relic sites in this case, maybe a wormhole. So I'm not going to go any further on that one at the moment. So I'm actually gonna take it off the list by right clicking it and hitting ignore result. If I want it back, I can come to this ignored filter and I can hit the cross and it will come back in fact let's do that just to show you I can take it from the ignored list and put it back but at the moment I'm not interested in the combat site so let's pursue this other uh, site here the NPU double click and it will center it double click to get my top-down view drag my control box double click drag my control box analyze wait for the scan to analyze it will do a sweep from left to right across my probe scanner window and as you improve your skills that speed will increase to make things faster still and my signal should increase from zero up to 21.2 just short of the 25 i need to find out what it is double click double click drag from the top down view double click drag from the side on view drop my probes one size analyze rinse and repeat see how the double clicking on the signature to center it on the screen double clicking to get your top view double click to get your side view drop your probes and that's it that's that process and you get this rhythm where you can get through these nice and quick now i can see i've got at least some information that it's a wormhole and i'm up to 67.3 percent let's finish this one off before we talk about the keyboard hotkeys double click the signature double click the screen drag double click drag drop the size, analyze. Wait for the scan to happen. And on this time we should hit 100%, which will give me now something that I can warp to. I know it's an unstable wormhole. I've got a warp to button. I can right click and save that location. And there you go, there's the ID and what it is. And if I hit, so now I'm gonna change that to two days because it won't, I don't want that forever because that wormhole is going to move around in different places. And you'll see it's on my list of locations. That was the process of scanning down a cosmic signature. Well done. Now, how can we speed that up a little bit? I talked about keyboard hotkeys. So instead of dragging my slider here and then using my mouse to hit the analyze button, this is how I like to set it up. You might pick some different keys, but uh, I've got this set and it works really sweet. So let's set up our hotkeys. Let's hit escape, go to my shortcuts and in the combat window, or if you can't find it, you can just type in uh, scanner probes and you'll see increase probe scan range, fire off the, uh, sorry, refresh the probe scan or decrease the probe scan scan range. All right, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna change the decrease to the full stop button. All right, so on your keyboard, from your right shift moving towards the left, you should have a question mark, then a full stop or a period and a comma. I'm gonna change this and I'll explain why in a moment. My decrease probe scan, probe scan will be my full stop key my period key my increase probe scan i'm going to set to the comma which is the key immediately to the left of that and the refresh probe scan i'm going to set to the question mark and i'm going to return to the game now i've got three buttons there now the beauty of this is i can rest three fingers on there and i don't need to use the slider in fact you'll see i can go up or down just using those keys that I've set. And if I want to fire off the scanner, I hit the question mark. So those three fingers are actually just resting over those three buttons. So well, let's find the next one and I'm gonna use those shortcut keys and we'll use the same process. Now let's have a look at this one here, NZV. 
If I double click on this, I'm getting this red circle ring. It's no longer a sphere, it's a ring. That means the signature is somewhere on that ring. So I am going to double click, drag, double click, drag. I'm going to just analyze at this point. I didn't drop the probes. I could have, but looking at the size of that ring, I've got it just inside my four AU probes. So we'll see if I can narrow it down from here. Nice. Double click, double click, double click. And now using my hot key, I'm going to drop my probe and analyze. You'll see I didn't move my mouse have down here to drag things or hit the analyze button. Just doing it all through the mouse, double clicking and hot keys. All right, I know that it's a wormhole. Double click, double click, dra drag, double click, drag, drop the size, analyze. Right, I've got another wormhole. All right, let's find this last signature, A, B, O. Now, if I double click, and I can see that it's uh, way over here, this red sphere. Now, I could drag my control box, if I double click over onto this sphere, right? But if I look at that sphere, in fact, let's center that on the screen by double clicking. It's quite large. Okay, so if I put my probes up around, well, four I use, not too bad. But I, instead of doing it on the cross here, I know that it's going to be within 5 AU of this planet. So I'm actually going to use the planet. I can double click that as my center point. So double click, drag it down, just make sure I'm looking at it right, and analyze. I got it at 6%. Now, very interesting. You'll see here we've actually got two red dots. That means it could be this one and it could be this one. So how do we know? Now, without using my, moving my control box, here's my little tip for you. If I drop the size of my probes, you'll see one of them is still within the scan. One is further away. Usually, it's the one that's further away that you want. So if you get this double signature, just drop your probes one size, see which one is further away, and that's the one you want to target. So I'm going to double click that, double click, bring my probes over it, double click, and I'm actually going to drop that again, analyze, and hopefully that will be the one we're after. Yeah, so the one that's further away from where you were, when you've got a double, that's the one you're going for. Looking good, it's another wormhole. Double click, double click, double click. Drop the probes. Scan, I can zoom in if I want a bit of a closer view. Once again, all just using double clicks on the mouse and hotkeys to change my probe size and hit the analyze button. And my three signatures are all wormholes, which we'll dive into in a future episode. But I think that might be enough for today. We've 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 covered this this technique of scanning and how you can do it quickly and efficiently using the double click, double click, and hot keys to increase decrease your scan uh, probe size and fire off your analyzer. Because the faster you can get through those signatures like when we get into a wormhole you li literally you may come across a wormhole that has 15 20 signatures and you want to get through them nice and quick so those little tips and tricks that i've shown you will help you get through that really fast so we're going to head back to the station and we'll just have a quick chat about some of the skills and some of the modules that you can use to help get through your scanning even faster but before we do that, it just dawned on me, I didn't show you guys how to get them back. So I've reset myself in another system here. Uh, this button here, top left corner, recover your active probes. When we do that, they will come back to you. We'll do that in a moment. While we're here, let's just do a quick uh, tour. Your probes do expire, but you've got a long time, in this case, over an hour. 
Some of the stats here just talk about your scan strength and how they've been modified with your skills. You guys can have a look through these at your own um, time. Deviation reduces the possible error and these are the, your stats relating to how quickly your scan happens. And in a moment when we talk about the skills, we'll look at how we can reduce some of those stats. But let's pull those probes back in, hit recover active probes. They will go back into my cargo hold, ready to be reloaded into my probe launcher for the next round. All right, let's head back to the station. Well, here we are back at Jeter. Let's come across to our character sheet and go into our scanning category for skills. Now, the beautiful thing is as an alpha, if you're playing as an alpha clone, you are already provided with. Your starting character already has the skills you need. In fact, that scanning we just did, I have not added or trained any skills. Now, as an alpha, however, I am limited. If I look at, for example, astrometric range finding, I cannot train that past level two because of the alpha restrictions. Now the skills in the scanning category could affect a number of different factors, could improve the speed at which your analyzing happens, can improve the strength of the scanner probes because as you get into like low sec, null sec, wormhole uh, exploration, some of the signatures are very small and harder to track down. Now, relatively easy what we've been doing in high sec but if you can improve the strength of your scanning uh, then you'll be able to get those smaller signatures or there are some things that will improve your ability to do the hacking game for data and relic sites so for example the archaeology skill gives you plus 10 virus coherence per level we'll talk about that when we do the hacking game uh, coming up in the next episode probably and the rest I'm gonna let you guys go through and have a read of except for this one astrometrics this is the kind of the primary one but it's already trained to three it improves your scan strength your scan deviation which is uh, another measure of how accurately you can scan and your scan probe time now if you're an Omega clone playing strongly suggest you get that up to five to really help out your scanning abilities. Right, let's talk ships. Now this ship that I'm flying in here, I'm a Galente Alpha clone, so I'm flying the Galente frigate called the Imicus. Now you can scan in any ship. It's just a high slot module that you put into the high slot on your ship. However, there are some ships that have bonuses towards your scanning. So let's take a look at the ship tree and identify which are those ships. I am in the Galente tree at the moment and here is the Imicus. Now you'll see in the traits for this ship that it has bonuses to core and combat scanner probe strength. Don't worry about combat scanner probes for now, it's the core probes we'll be using for exploration. Combat scanner probes act the same except they find additional information they actually can probe down ships instead of just signatures so for every level of galente frigate i'm going to increase this strength additionally it has a roll bonus here to give you a stronger virus strength when you're doing the hacking mini game for relic and data sites each of the races has its own version so if i was to go to the amar ship tree i'm looking here at the magnate which you'll see has the same bonuses Kaldari, we are looking at the Heron, once again the same bonuses, and the Minmatar, we're looking at the Probe. Now they are all the Tech 1 versions of the ships that have the scanning bonuses. Now if you are playing as an Omega clone, there are also Tech 2 versions in each of the races. In this case the Galente Tech 2 is the Helios, and you'll see it has 10% bonus per Covert Ops bon skill towards your core scanner probe strength now let's come over here to the sisters of eve faction and you'll see there are three ships here now another very very popular exploration ship is called the astero you'll see it has a straight up 37 and percent bonus to core scanner probe strength also 10 point bonus to relic and data analyzer strength now the big advantage the astero has is it can also fit a covert ops cloaking device that's great if you're playing as an Omega clone. However, be aware that Alpha clones cannot train cloaking skills. And as we delve further into this little series, we'll jump into an Astero and show you some of its benefits in action. And finally, there are a small number of additional ships that do have bonuses towards scanning. Something here like the Gnosis, which has this 37.5% bonus to core 
Scanner probe strength. Let's quickly talk about fits now. How do I know what to fit to my ship to get started in my new career as an explorer? Well, go on over to the fitting window, and in fact, in the hulls and fits section, I'm going to type in Imicus, because I'm in the Galente one, and you'll see there are what we call two community fits. They're fits that are built into the game to suggest what you might like to get started in. I've gone with this Tech 1 Exploration fit. It's a great new bro... Uh, friendly fit it's very cheap at 1.7 million isk so it's a great way to get started in exploration I'm here in Jita so the market is incredibly well stocked so I could actually buy this by simply clicking open multi buy and once the multi buy window populates I could buy everything I need simply by hitting the buy button I won't do that because I've already got one and let's take a quick look at the fit and what is on this ship at the heart of it all is our core probe launcher if I come down to the market I can find them in ship equipment scanning equipment scan probe launchers and I'm also going to expand the faction and storyline and here's my core probe launcher one there are a few variations including the sisters core probe launcher and you'll see up in the top left here I've already put some in a compare box so that we can have a look at what's the difference core probe launcher one nice and cheap just under 28,000 isk has no bonus to scan strength. The Tech 2 version is quite a bit dearer, also gets a 5% bonus to scan strength, but is limited to Omega clones only. You might think, well, expanded probe launcher, what does that do? Well, it launches the core probes and the combat scanner probes. So you might say to yourself, well, well, why wouldn't I use that? It's not much dearer. But if I turn on the CPU usage stat, you'll see here, you can't fit it to most of your small ships. It uses more than 10 times the amount of CPU that the core probe launcher won. So you can forget that for the moment. We'll look at that maybe way down the track in a future episode. What you can use, however, get yourself a 10% scan strength bonus is a sister's core probe launcher. Usable by alphas, however, the, the limiting factor here is cost. 27 and a half million for that launcher much more expensive now when it comes to the probes themselves which are the actual charges that go into the probe launcher today in our example we were using the core scanner probe one nice and cheap but remember you need at least eight preferably more 16 or 24 you know, multiples of eight in case you lose a set and if you were deep in a wormhole you need a spare set to be able to find your way out you can however purchase the more expensive sisters core scanner probes you'll see that the uh, base sensor strength is the stat that changes here as you go up once again more expensive going from 40 strength like, as your base sensor strength up to 44 or you could spend a ridiculous amount of money for that one extra point this is probably for dedicated explorers using a sisters core probe launcher and a sisters core scanner probe is pretty much the way to go to maximize your scanning strength and success of your exploration overall. Now the rest of the modules on this ship tend to relate to what you're going to do after you find the signature. You've got a salvager where you might salvage some materials. Data analyzers and relic analyzers are the modules that you'll use for the hacking mini game. So this will be used the data analyzer for data sites. The relic analyzer for relic sites a cargo scanner allows you to look at the containers in those sites to see what's in them before you hack them we've got some propulsion mod and i flew through these but we'll look at them in probably the next episode in this series and in your low slot here we've just got some tanking and some speed and some armor repairs however in the rigs we do have two important rigs here small gravity capacitor upgrade ones when we look at the information for those you'll see this ship modification increases a ship's scan probe strength so we've got tech one versions of those two of them fitted to the ship to, once again just to boost our scanning strength to help us scan down those signatures well there you go there's our part one of our introduction to new bro exploration hey in my head that was going to be a 10 15 minute video but as often occurs it's blown well out to over half an hour now if you've stayed for the whole half hour that means either you enjoyed yourself or you learnt something hopefully 
a little bit of both. Now, if I've missed something, if I've made a mistake, or if there's something you would like to know particular for the next couple of episodes as we work through this, please pop your questions, comments in the uh, comment section below, and I can try and incorporate them into the next few episodes. As always, good job. Well done.